What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I took my garage floor from this to this. I'm gonna pretty much go start to finish from prepping the concrete, to laying down the gray, adding the flakes, and all the way to the, putting the clear coat on. So it's gonna be kind of a long video. I documented the entire process. Um, and this is also my first time ever trying this, so this is not really meant to be a how-to. It's kind of just documenting what I did to get my floor looking like how it used to, just bare concrete, to now looking like this. So I did make a lot of mistakes on the way, so hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two from this video if this is something that you're planning on doing to your garage floor, but I will say, uh, end result is worth it. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. Yo, 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 what is up guys, Nick Nikai here, Let's Drift Media, thank you guys for coming back to the channel. So today's episode is going to be the start of the garage makeover, aka the dream garage build. So you guys know I'm going to be epoxing the floor, uh, or not epoxing, uh, polycuramine, same shit pretty much, I'll show you guys that right now. So this is the product I'm going to be using, Rust-Oleum. We got the clear epoxy and the rock solid kit, which actually isn't epoxy, it's polycuramine. So it's supposed to be stronger. I got the gloss, high gloss gray. Really excited to lay this down. This kit right here says it's enough for a two car garage, but watching people online, they said they end up having to do a really thin coat with the two car garage with this kit. So I ended up buying another half car, single car garage kit. So hopefully I can just lay on a really fat coat and I got two packs of the clear. So both of these are also made for two and a half car garages. So we'll see if anything I have left over, I could always return it to Home Depot. But yeah guys, excited to see how it looks. So here's the kit opened up. You have obviously the polycuramine right here. It's kind of in a two bag type style. You just smash it together and mix it all up. Uh, we have the acid etch kind of solution to really prep the concrete and get it ready to adhere and comes with a foam roller as well as the flakes. So I was still debating if I'm gonna throw in these flakes or not. But yeah, so that's the stuff I'm gonna use. Really excited to get this garage nice and pretty. Uh, I was already starting to get a bunch of crap in here, so I was like, I need to just clear it all out and start this before I load up too much stuff in the garage. So first off, gotta get this big yellow bitch out of this garage so I can have a nice clean space. Probably clean up a little bit more in here. Picked up a wet dry vac from Home Depot. Start cleaning. guys so pretty much got the whole garage cleaned out got rid of all the boxes I didn't want to bore you guys too much with the time lapse but I got the 240 out of the way for now um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is wash off any kind of dirt debris we got in here then just start laying down this uh, rust-oleum degreaser and cleaner scrubbing it in around with this bush Br bush brush and yeah that's pretty much it done scrubbing the garage. Uh, my pressure washer actually ran out of gas so that kind of sucked so I'm probably gonna go over it again with the pressure washer and a little bit more de research tomorrow but at least now I could get a good scrubbing down for the first cleaning session. But boy is this tiring. <laughs>
right, well that was one pass. Scrubbing the entire floor with the push broom and some degreaser. Like I st said, still gonna get the pressure washer in here just to really get in there. Hopefully get anything, any kind of dirt or oil that's been stained in there. But I mean, it's a fairly new house. Uh, only a couple years old, so I don't think the previous owners were really wrenching in here, spilling too much oil. It looked like they just parked their cars and stuff, but it already looks a whole lot cleaner just from the degreasing. So really excited to get the, the concrete grinder and really smooth it down because I noticed a lot of little surfaces, just, I don't know, paint spilled or like a lot of imperfections in the concrete that I didn't notice until I started scrubbing it. So that was a good little key right there. So I guess we'll pick this up again tomorrow, guys. All right, guys, we are back. Next day on the project. Uh, looking at the garage. Now it doesn't look as clean, honestly, as it did yesterday. I'm guessing these white spots are spots where I didn't wash the degreaser off all the way. Still some oil stains, it looks like. A little bit over there. I don't know if that part might still be wet. But over here, I know I definitely did have some oil when I had my engine sitting here when we first moved in. So uh, we got the gasoline for the pressure washer. So hopefully today I'll be able to wash it off a lot better and actually get like a deep wash in this co uh, concrete. But anyways, uh, went to Home Depot today after work, picked up, ended up getting the buffer with the concrete prep pad. And let me say, when I went to Home Depot guys, these guys didn't know shit about the tools. Like not even trying to be a dick, but like, I went in there and told them like, hey, I need like this concrete grinder, um, prepping my floor for epoxy. They kind of just like looked at me and I kind of asked them like, what should I get? Like, what do you guys recommend? And they really didn't have like a solid answer. They're like, I don't know. Like it's, it's kind of like opinion. It's all preference. And I'm like, dude, like, like you fucking work here. Like I get it. Like you may not know, like if people at work maybe ask me like something about a car, a customer is going to ask me. I may not know the answer, but I'll for sure know where to get the answer or find someone who can get that answer for me. And these guys seem like they just didn't give a shit. And I was just like, God damn, like these motherfuckers. But anyways, I kind of just got this one because it seemed like it was the ones that I've seen on fellow YouTube videos. And this concrete prep pad said it was good for prepping, uh, pretty much scuffing up the floor a little bit to uh, get it ready for paint or whatever adhesion you were gonna put. So anyways, enough ranting. I'm gonna go ahead and wet the floor again. I'm probably gonna spray some more degreaser because I feel like this will help scrub the floor and uh, buff it up a little bit nicer than just me scrubbing it with the brush. Cause that shit was hard. But anyways guys, let's get started finishing up cleaning. All right, well, note to self, if you're doing this, make sure the ground is hella wet. First time I tried to do this, this thing was like out of control and that thing was about to spin me around the whole machine. But I got the floor super wet, got the hang of it. You can see it's kind of creating a nice little hatch. I mean, that's a lot of it's in the water, but hopefully that'll help the epoxy stick really well. At this point, I really have no idea what I'm doing, but you know what? We're just hoping for the best, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to scuff up the whole garage and pressure wash it out and let it dry.
a little bit more than halfway done. Went ahead and buffed all this panel, this one, that one, and this one. Worked out pretty nice in a couple spots, like you can see right here. These things before were slightly raised. Not too sure what exactly that was, but I just stood on there for a little bit with the buffer and was able to get it nice and smooth. So it all feels really smooth. I can't get my pressure washer to work. I think I left it sitting too long. So I don't know what's going on with that right now. It's really annoying, but I'm at least finish buffing the whole concrete tonight and then go from there. Maybe try and repair the pressure washer because I really want to wash all this crap out of here. You can see it's like really like chalky because it's guffing up the concrete basically. So really want to get this all cleaned up and just set to dry and so I can lay the epoxy this weekend, but we'll see if that's going to happen. This process has been by far pretty difficult. A lot more than expected, so. But live and learn, having a good time, getting my ass kicked already. Let's keep going, guys. So after about doing half the garage, I realized this handle tilts down, which makes it slightly easier. Still spins pretty crazy, but I mean, I feel pretty stupid now for using it standing up this whole time. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back now, re-wet everything and cross hatch it in the opposite pattern that I was doing. And hopefully we should be good from there. I mean, pretty much any bumps or any imperfections have been removed out of the concrete. I mean, a lot of them were like little spots that I could have just done by hand, but this thing really just went to town. Really need to pressure wash it though. It's still super chalky in here. But God damn, I can't believe this damn thing. See, if they would have told me how to use it, Last night the camera died and I was just really trying to get this done. Ended up getting the pressure washer fixed, just took apart the carb and cleaned it all out. So I was able to pressure wash. I uh, wanted to get that done because the sun was already down and I didn't want to make too much noise in the new neighborhood. But this is what the garage looks like currently. Fully pressure washed out and sanded slash scuffed. You can see if you look closely, there's all these little, um, scuff marks from the sander. So ideally, I think that's what you want. So the epoxy or polycuramine can really bond to. You can see all those little circles. So since I'm not primering, I'm just straight laying the Rust-Oleum kit on. Hopefully this will work. Really don't know, uh, it's a lot of work. And then as you guys saw in the video, I realized you can actually tilt the arm down on the floor sander and that made things a whole lot easier. You still have to hold on for dear life, but man, do I feel dumb. But anyways, learning process guys, this is not a tutorial. This is just my experience doing it. But yeah, I'm just gonna let this uh, floor really dry out for the next couple days and pick this back up once it's super dry. I'm gonna put like the piece of ceram wrap over the concrete and make sure there's no condensation still in there. See right here, I scuffed it really nice. You can really see the sanding marks. But yeah, just gonna let this dry and then probably on the weekend, I'm gonna wait for a, uh, start it really in the, early in the morning lay the full Rust-Oleum kit on, as well as some flakes, let it dry for another day or so, and then lay the clear coat. That's where we stand right now, guys. So you can see kind of these white spots. I still need to vacuum it. Kind of just uh, dust. So I thought I pressure washed it good enough, but I guess I didn't. But there'll be a good vacuuming sesh as soon as all this dries really nice. See over here, there's some more super chalky stuff. 
but it goes away if you wipe it. So just gonna wipe that down, vacuum, yeah. What's up yo-yos? So the day has come to finally lay down the polycaramine kit. So I went ahead and vacuumed and pretty much scrubbed off by hand any of that powdery residue. You can see now none of those like white spots. This spot that's not wet. I don't know if the concrete's just a little darker over there. I don't even really know, dude. Same with over here. It looks wet. Uh, it might be a like an oil stain or something. I don't know. I scrubbed the hell out of this place. I don't even care at this point. I just want to lay this down and hopefully it comes out the best. But we'll see. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pretty much just tape up the edges because I'm probably gonna paint these little curb areas rather than put the product on there. Now I can just put it all on the floor. So I'm just gonna start taping that, open the garage up and tape down there. And yeah. I got my buddy Parker coming over. He's actually done this to his garage before, so it'll be nice to have another hand uh, help lay this on, and hopefully he knows a little bit more than me about this. <laughs> Epoxy day. <laughs> we got Zachy, we got Parker. There for the help. For what? All right, so the plan is we're gonna mix the bag, cut it open, start pouring it. Go right here, 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 and here. I'll set up a time lapse so you guys can see the whole thing. We just ended up grabbing the flakes with our hands and throwing it. It was working better that way. Pretty even though. So we're gonna continue on these two panels. About what, halfway through that first bag? Halfway, a little more. A little more than halfway, okay. All right.
All right, so we have one bag left from the single car kit. We basically ended up using one bag per two squares. This one we had a little bit left in the bag, so we just put a super heavy coat. We noticed the concrete was absorbing the product a lot, so we had to go back on some spaces. So the heavier, the better. So we have one full bag left for just this little section. So we'll put a nice heavy coat. Job well done. We just got finished. We're gonna let it dry now. Anything, Parker? Looks good. All right, guys. Well, the garage has had about 30, 30 some hours to dry now. We did it yesterday about uh, like 11 a.m. in the morning. So right now it's about 4 p.m. following day. That's what we're looking at. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's not perfect. You can see right here, we noticed a lot of uh, spots, the concrete was really absorbing the product. So you can see right here, you can kind of see it underneath, just certain spots. You can tell just the, didn't penetrate all the way through. And you could also see so these air bubbles they kind of started popping up as it was sitting here. It got like a little warm. So that kind of sucks. It kind of leaves like a little crater mark right there, you can see. So I did, well I knew this, but I couldn't get to them because I didn't want to step all over it. But when those bubbles start popping up, you're supposed to get a torch, kind of run it over there and they pop. And you should, shouldn't have that problem, but I don't have any of those spike shoes, which kind of sucked because it would have really been easier to go back and fix some spots that we messed up on. But pretty much used one bag for each two sections. Um, towards the end, we ended up having a lot left because we didn't re realize we weren't using that much on these other ones. So this last two blocks got a nice solid coat. I would say they probably came out the best, minus the air bubbles. This one actually had the most bubbles. So you can see, there's really a lot of fucked up spots. And honestly, it's gonna drive me crazy, just like these certain spots. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but you just can't, it's not fully gray. And it's probably gonna bug me. So what I did, I just bought another single car kit and I'm gonna attempt to touch up the spots that didn't get a super heavy coat, as well as I'm gonna sand these bubbles, and hopefully I can save it. Um, kind of going on a whim right now, so we're gonna see what's up, but yeah. For right now, I'm gonna kind of sand these bubbles down because I was gonna have to do that anyways before I clear coat it. And I'm gonna try and mix another bag and just kind of fill in the spots that didn't really get a full coat. right there I mean like I said on camera you can't really tell but in person I could tell and I already know if I don't uh, try and fix this now it's just gonna bug me forever so just said screw it I'm gonna try it out so we'll see what happens I don't know how well it's gonna bond to whatever is already on there I mean I think it should be good just because you can clear coat right on top of this I don't see why adding more gray would uh, change anything like that the only thing I'm worried about is if, if, if it bubbles up again, because I still don't have those spike shoes. I have the torch, but it's gonna be really hard to actually go and pop them. And then if they keep coming up, cause it's really warm in this garage and you don't wanna have the sunlight directly on it. So I guess we'll just see what happens, guys. All right, well, me and Maya just scuffed down the air bubbles with some sandpaper, we did it by hand. You can see all the little marks right there. Those are pretty much all where we had air bubbles. So I went ahead and wiped it down with a cloth. Let's see all those spots. There was so many guys. There's had to be like probably a hundred little air bubbles. A lot of them were over here where we put the super thick coat. So like at first it looked really good, but once it started drying, those bubbles started coming up and we weren't able to access them with the torch to pop them. So that was kind of what happened. 
So what we're gonna do now is kind of tape off a section, keep a walkway so we can torch any further air bubbles. But basically you recoat this whole center section and then some a little bit in that corner because those are the spots you can tell that we didn't get full coverage. I don't know if you can tell on camera, you can see like right there, that's like concrete, not fully covered. So yeah, we're kind of just gonna do a couple sections, keep an eye on it, and hopefully this time coats it fully because little spots really bug me, even though you probably won't see them that much. And you can't really tell like on camera from afar, but I noticed them. You can kind of see right here, this area, see it's a little bit gray right there. So, let's see what happens. Alrighty, well you can see the taped off section in the middle is pretty much where we did another coat. That was really bugging me how you could see through there, so. Really thought I was scared you'd be able to tell where we repainted it, but you can't really even tell. I mean, we won't know until we see the finished product. But so far, not seeing any air bubbles, we just kind of did a light coat. Just wanted to really fill in those spots and then reflaked it. So. I guess we'll find out in the morning or in a couple hours. You can see right here where the crater's it's a little bit lifted, but you can't really see it unless you look at it. And then once we clear it, it should blend it in a lot better. But I mean, from afar, with all the flakes, you really can't see any imperfection. So really glad I ended up doing the flakes and not skimping out. But right now it looks really good. It is wet, so we'll come check on it in a little bit and see where it stands. All right guys, so now the second layer you saw us just put on has dried for about 48 hours. This is pretty much two evenings ago. And it's all really dry. I wanted to give it a good amount of time to make sure it was really dry before I put the clear on it. Make sure it was all nice and cured, but pretty good now. It doesn't really leave any imprints if you like poke your fingernail into it. So you can see this middle part, it's like fully covered now. So I'm pretty satisfied with it. Even repatched over here in this corner, even though the toolbox is going to be over it, but still. Uh, one spot here didn't really get to fully cover. But besides that, that's about it. You can see uh, another spot over there, two spots. Uh, we sanded down the bubbles from afar, you can't really tell, but I mean, if you get close, you can see like right there. So there's still a good amount of those. And I didn't want to set it down too far and go down to the concrete, which I should have done anyways. If I could go back, I would just sand them down flush with the floor and then just do the gray again since I redid the middle. But I wasn't too sure how the middle part was going to dry, so I didn't want to do the whole floor again and not be able to fix any spots in case they start bubbling. But we didn't have that problem. This middle part dried just perfect. Uh, just let it sit and it was fine. So now what I'm going to do is lay on the clear coat which is essentially the same process. You can see the scratch marks here, hoping that the clear coat will fill them in, which I'm pretty sure it will. So, all right, so here we got the clear coat kit. Uh, this one they're saying covers two and a half garage. I bought two kits uh, just to be safe. Same process, uh, puncture the bag, mix the two together. Also comes with this anti-skid additive. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there because I've heard if you don't put this in there, then the floor will look like really amazing, but it'll be super slippery if it's wet or you spill oil or anything. 
And as much as I want it to just look like super flawless, uh, I'm gonna be working in here and the last thing I wanna do is be slipping around when I spill some oil or water gets in here and all that good stuff. So I'm just gonna mix this packet with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and puncture this, mix it up really good. And then I'm gonna pour it in here and use this little paint mixer tool and my DeWalt with the 10 millimeter to mix it up really good. And I'm just gonna kind of pour and hopefully this bag should cover. What I'm hoping is maybe if there is spots that I miss, I can use the other bag like I did to refinish this middle part. But I'm gonna try and spread this across the whole garage and hopefully I cover everything. The only thing with the clear, it's just a little bit more difficult because it's harder to see. So you gotta really be careful when you're going down and make sure you're going down evenly. Uh, to try and cover the full garage because you will know notice if you don't cover some spots with a clear because you'll see some dull spots like you could already see right here. So hopefully I don't get any of that. Hopefully I get oh, just a whole lot of shine. But we'll see. Pretty nervous for this. Really don't want to fuck this up. I'm already this far into the project so I'm just hoping for the best guys. But let's get started! Okay, well I went ahead and pretty much used that one bag that was supposed to cover the whole garage on just the front. I don't know really what I did wrong. If I had the wrong brush roller or what the hell man, but this stuff was just like very hard to spread. A lot of spots it was just kind of like not really spreading evenly. So I mean, I didn't want to continue on the rest of the floor because this floor honestly looks a lot better than that with the clear coat. You could see, I mean, it's still wet, but usually it looks better when it's wet than when it's dry. So pretty, uh, pretty bamboozled right now. I don't know what the hell I poured it. Literally started trying to just apply it like normal, like how I did the gray uh, polycuramine and it just wasn't spreading evenly. So like you could tell right there, there's some spots like where it kind of got to pull up good. There's like a nice good reflection, but then a lot of the spots look like this, which is very bumpy. And I'm wondering if that's the anti-etch or the anti-etch, the anti-skid material. Maybe that's a possibility. Maybe I shouldn't have put that whole bag of anti-skid, but I just assumed that you were supposed to use the whole bag because they give you one bag with the kit. So that could be a reason, because it does look a little bit grainy. But regardless, at least it covered up the sanding marks, because now you can't see all the little spots where we sanded the bubbles. So that's why I just kind of said screw it and did both these panels, but I'm not going to continue any further with this clear. Um, I don't even want to open the other box yet until I see how this dries, because right now I'm uh, pretty pissed off. I kind of wish I just uh, used the remaining gray when we did this since we had left over to just redo this side and just call it a day because honestly this stuff over here looks way better than that side that's cleared. <sighs> Fuck man. So that's where we stand. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll continue this after. All right guys, well it is 24 hours now after laying the clear coat. You guys saw in that last clip, I got actually got really frustrated because it wasn't coming out the way I thought it was gonna come out. And I ended up realizing that maybe I just put too much of that anti-skid additive in there because there really was no instructions on how much to use. So I just thought you mix the whole bag. And definitely I don't recommend mixing that whole bag with the clear coat. Um, so ended up re, just pretty much laying that whole bag or the first bag of clear coat with all this anti-skid additive on these two panels. And you can tell, I mean, it should work as to not slip, 
because you can like see how grainy it is. But since I did repatch some spots, there were spots you could see that weren't that glossy. So I went ahead and mixed the second bag of clear coat and applied it all on here. And this time I didn't use as much sprinkle. I kind of just grabbed some and like just threw it out kind of like how I did the flakes. And that ended up working so much better. You can see it still got in there, all like kind of the gritty stuff. That's all the anti-skid stuff. So I really don't think you need that much. I mean, unless you're going for that look, but you could just, you gotta really tell the spots that have a shitload. You can just see so much of it. But yeah, I was just like super disappointed. I was like, I don't know. I didn't even want to film anymore because I was just like pissed off at how it was coming off. But then after realizing and just putting the rest of the clear with less anti-skid additive, it actually came out really nice and I'm really satisfied with this. So really excited to see how long it will last. You never know, but I mean, I'm not doing too much crazy stuff in here. And plus I did put so many layers. You guys saw how many layers I did, plus the clear coat. I have a good feeling about this. So overall, pretty satisfied, dude. Cannot wait to start putting things in here. I'm gonna go ahead and let all of it dry for like a good week before I really put a car in here or anything really heavy. I want the toolbox right there and give me that nice US General 73 inch. But yeah, this is what it looks like guys. Pretty much finished, or it is finished. I guess I'll just show you some like kind of close-ups. So you can see how it really looks. I'm really glad I got that mirror like finish in this section pretty much all four of these panels came out really mirror like just this stuff like i was keep saying is too much anti-skid you can see over here too where we have the air bubbles which I, again i should have filled it in with the gray when i was doing the middle piece so you can see spots like right here and then I think some of the big craters, where are they at? Where the bigger craters, like right here, you can see they are a little lifted. So I mean, right now, because I'm putting the camera right on it, you can really tell, but when you're looking at it from afar, honestly, you can't really tell. Overall, it looks very good. For my first time trying this, pretty proud of this job. A lot of hard work went into this project, but overall satisfied. Look at that shine. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. And I'll try to guide you or let you know, fill it in, whatever the best I can. Uh, like I said, this was my first time attempting to ever lay epoxy on a garage floor, and I think it came out pretty good. I was gonna do, uh, at the end of the video, like things I messed up on or things I wish I did differently, but seeing how this video is already very long, I'm just gonna go ahead and do another video uh, talking about all the things that I wish I did or wish I didn't do to uh, make this project come out even better. So, yeah. So, thank you guys. If you made it this far of the video, feel free to drop a comment. Uh, I'll answer any questions I can, but anyways guys, hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll catch you guys later. Hey, feel I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker.